Today, I have one of the world's leading authorities on vitamin D. In this video interview, Dr. Michael Hollick debunks common myths about vitamin D. Let's get to the interview. As you age as an adult, over does that change at all? It does not. In your fifties or sixties or seventies now. There's a lot of there's a lot of confusion out there that they said that aging decreases the efficiency of your ability to absorb vitamin D. Not we did the study and showed that's not true. But what is true is that your skin begins to thin as you age, and so the efficiency of producing vitamin D in your skin is less. 70 than it would be at 20 or 30 years of age. But those studies have been done, and we've done some of them to show if you take elderly, put them outside on a veranda and expose their legs, for example, and arms to sunlight, you can raise their blood level of 25 hydroxy vitamin D. But again, always recommend um, vitamin D supplementation because as you you noted time of day, season, latitude, degree of skin pigmentation. You really have to be a hunter gatherer outside, basically half naked every day, right? Like a Maasai herder, for example, in order to be able to make enough vitamin D. Or if you take a shower after you've been in the sun, all those things you know, wash away or don't allow the, the process of vitamin D to occur. Am I correct? No. Oh, okay. So, which is great. I'm glad that you asked the question. It's ridiculous to suggest that you should not take a bath after being exposed to sunlight. Hmm, okay. And the reason is that you're making vitamin D in your living cells. You're not making it on the surface of your skin. You cannot wash vitamin D off your skin or from your cells when you're exposed to sunlight. So that is a myth. So just on the skin washing, so if my my understanding was it was the interaction of the soap and then the oil on your skin that you know sort of interfered with the process. So that's not okay. Uh, Thank you so for clarifying that for me. Cool. Okay. Right. Because it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I guess in my brain, you know, um, in looking at the process, it started with the skin and then it maybe needed a certain amount of time. And you're saying it's it's already happened. So what's happening is it's mainly made, so your epidermis um, has several layers, right? And it's the basal layer right next to the dermal capillary bed where most of it's made. We had published that some 40 years ago. And so you're, you're making it in living cells right next to your blood system. Okay. And so you can't possibly wash this off. So it's just happening. Anyway. Right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, I'm um, glad that you asked the question because I hear this all the time and it's nonsense, basically. Right. If you, again, go on the internet and they say, you have to have vitamin D supplement with fat, right? A fatty meal. Not true. Uh, vitamin D okay. will be absorbed on its own on an empty stomach because it goes into the small intestine. And then my cells, chylomicrons, are made. It's absorbed into your lymphatic system, goes up mm -hmm. into your superior vena cava, is dumped into your bloodstream and then goes to your liver to get converted to 25-hydroxy vitamin D. However, if you have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, we've done studies to show, it markedly reduces your ability to absorb vitamin D. Celiac disease, about 10% mm. of the population have celiac disease, right? gluten sensitivity. They have a difficult time absorbing vitamin D. So typically when I see patients that I would be vitamin D deficient, and I would give them vitamin D and it didn't rise very much, then I would work them up for celiac disease. And often that was the cause. Um, just so that I could correct a, a mistake that I've been saying to everybody that make sure that you're taking it with fatty foods. It doesn't matter what they take it with. No, nope. we did. Again, we did the study wow. and we showed in orange juice on a piece of toast, 
um, or in corn oil. Didn't make any difference at all. But more importantly, what was interesting is that one of the reasons people thought that vitamin D is in milk because of the fat, right? But the problem, of course, is that most people drink now skim milk that has no fat. Mm -hmm. So we asked the question, what is your ability to absorb vitamin D from skim milk versus whole milk? And you'd be shocked at the, at the answer, which is it's better in skim milk than it is in whole fat milk. And the reason is that when you are ingesting whole fat milk, you don't, in, you don't uh, absorb 100% of the fat. Some of it is lost, okay. and the vitamin D sticks with it. It's a very small difference, but it was curious to me that, yeah, it's a misconception out there. You don't need fat in order to absorb vitamin D. Vitamin D is fat soluble and is perfectly happy on its own. Okay, so thank you very much for clarifying that for me and thousands of people out there. But also, there's an interesting other concept um, that we demonstrated, which is that when you take vitamin D orally, it, it rapidly goes up in your blood and then rapidly comes back down. But when you make it in your skin, it takes a while for it to be released into the bloodstream. So when you make vitamin D in your skin, it lasts two to three times longer in your body than it does if you take an oral dose. And another myth out there is that magnesium is important for absorbing vitamin D. And that's nonsense. Does magnesium play a role, though, for osteoporosis if people are trying to increase their calcium? So magnesium is a very important component. I mean, it's a, it's a minor component of your bone, but independently, magnesium actually will have some effect on your parathyroid glands and on enzymes that may be activating vitamin D. So we always recommend, um, especially elders seem to be more prone to magnesium deficiency, is a magnesium supplement is a reasonable choice, um, along with a vitamin D supplement. And we haven't really talked about this at all, but you also have to make sure you have adequate calcium intake. This clip is part of a longer interview on vitamin D and bone health. Go here to learn the importance of vitamin D on the health of your bones. Thank you for joining me today.